Good morning, Grace United Methodist Church. Good morning, friends and family. Uh, glad that you are here this morning. It is July 6th. I trust that you had a safe and healthy weekend. Good morning, Terry. Our top fans are coming on board now. I like how Facebook has made some of you top fans. Good morning, Denise. Yeah. So we're moving into our summer rhythm kind of slowly and easily. I hope this Monday and Wednesday rhythm works well for you. Good morning, Judy. Glad that you're here this morning. Yes, I stopped and I did get Ruby into the kennel this morning, so it's a beautiful morning outside, so she can enjoy the outside and I don't need to worry about her barking <laughs> and talking to us, although, of course, she's always welcome. Grab your cup of coffee or tea and a nice warm beverage in the hand is a good way to start the day. Good morning, Jenny. Glad that you're here this morning. And Benny, good morning to you. Two good friends. Good morning, Sheila and Sharon and Debbie and Paul. Yay, lots of lots of top fans here this morning. Good morning, Wendy. Hope that you're doing well. So I think we are ready to get started. And we always begin with the light of Christ, with the blessing of the light that shines into our lives, into our world, the light that dawns each morning, the light that reminds us that God's mercies are made new every day, the light that is of Christ, a love that uh, burns brightly and even lights up the darkness to such a degree that even the darkness can be light uh, for us. And so we live in the knowledge of Christ's presence with us, and we light a candle in the blessing of that presence and acknowledging that this time of prayer is dedicated in the name of Jesus Christ, for whom we've been invited to pray. Uh, good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Katie. <laughs> you're working and listening at the same time. That's awesome. Good morning, Clayton. Glad that you're here this morning. So our theme this morning, um, again, I hope that there was uh, uh, some blessings for you in this uh, last weekend, which is traditionally a weekend when families gathered and picnics are had and uh, amidst all the social distancing and uh, staying at home, it, I'm sure it was a little different for everyone, um, but hoping that there were some uh, times of blessing and connectedness uh, amidst you and yours and your neighborhoods. Good morning, Marion. Glad that you're here today. Good morning. So our theme is wholehearted, wholehearted. And I'll explain how that theme came to be in just a moment. Uh, our scriptures this morning describe this wholeheartedness from Deuteronomy 6.5. Now this is the basis in the Jewish faith. It's the basis for our faith. Uh, it's a prayer called the Shema, and we should actually offer this prayer each and every day. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Amen. That's a wholeheartedness. Matthew, the 22, 22nd chapter, Jesus teaches the same thing. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Amen. And from the early church in Acts, 
This happens after the stoning of Stephen. And Barnabas is sent from Jerusalem into Antioch to encourage the church there because the news of this stoning had spread. And from Acts 11, verse 23, when he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Wholeheartedness. Morning, Rick and Dee. Good morning, Hannah, Alan. Glad that you're here. Yes. So this wholeheartedness, what, what comes to mind when you think of wholeheartedness? For me, um, I'm, I still have the Galatians scriptures from yesterday morning's worship uh, ringing in my ears. This wholeheartedness is where and how the fruit of the Spirit emerges in our lives. When we love God first with a wholeheartedness, uh, this love and joy and peace and patience and self-control, kindness, gentleness, all of these things emerge. So there are a couple of things that made me reflect on wholeheartedness this morning. First of all, um, here at Grace, we begin choir camp with 16 children who have agreed to a virtual choir camp. These are kids that normally, you know, singing together is such a blessing and allows really our hearts to become one and invites our hearts to become one. And 16 of our children have agreed that they need this right now and they are going to let their hearts become one during choir camp this week. And then I read the news this morning that over this last weekend, three children died in gun violence. An 11 year old here in the District of Columbia, a seven year old in Chicago, and an eight year old in Atlanta. If there was ever a time that we needed to be wholehearted about our love for God, our love for one another, a, a, a dedication to the Lord that through which the fruits would emerge and bring peace to our neighborhoods, it is now. The contrast of the blessing of watching our children sing this week and then hearing that there are families mourning the loss of children is too much. We all mourn the loss of these children as though they were ours. And we need to seek God ever more fully for a resolve that all of our children might be able to join in choir camp and sing for joy in the Lord. The other piece of news that captured my attention is that there are devastating rains in Japan, one of the islands in Japan. There are dozens have lost their lives there, and the death toll continues to rise. The rains continue there, and so we know that there are places um, where they're dealing more than just with pandemic um, more than matters of injustice, but also dealing with uh, these natural occurrences, natural disasters that create havoc in the rhythm and lives. So this sounds a little serious, doesn't it? And it is. Our love can be quite joyful, but it, it, it arises because we know that we live in a broken world we know that creation might be broken, but that is the very place where light can shine in. 
And so it is ours to remain wholehearted. It is ours to live into every purpose that God has given us, to live wholehearted lives, not to step back into uh, complacency, not to step back and say, well, there's nothing we can really do about it. There is. And the first thing that we can do is to pray. So I'm so thankful for each of you for coming uh, before us in prayer this morning. Uh, Sharon, glad that you've joined us. The one uh, model in our lives, uh, in our lifetime, who's been just amazing, an amazing witness for us is Mother Teresa. And I'm going to read a quote from Mother Teresa, who once said, our vocation is to belong to Jesus so completely that nothing can separate us from the love of God. What you and I must do is nothing less than putting our love for Christ into practice. That sounds like wholehearted living to me. She says, the important thing is not how much we accomplish, but how much we love and how much love we put into the deeds of each day. That is the measure of our love for God. So today, may everything that you do be done with love, maybe even with joy in your hearts, knowing of the love that Christ offered for us, of the disciples, uh, people like Stephen who loved Jesus so completely was willing to lay down his life, and that the early church was built upon the martyrs of the early church. And we carry and honor their lives and their witness with us today. I'm going to uh, say good morning to, to Glenn is here too. And good morning, Sharon. Glad that you're greeting one another. It's This is a good place to have an opportunity to shine some light uh, toward each other. So living wholeheartedly, living a life that is undivided, uh, living with a full trust in God's love seems like a lot for us. Uh, and today I invite you to pray that prayer, uh, the ancient prayer, the Shema. You shall love your Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your might in all that you do today. I hope that that will carry you through this day, through the, the work that you've been called to do, through the play that you've been called to do, uh, through your prayers. There is nothing better than loving one another in our prayers. So this morning um, in our prayers, Terry Berry usually joins us here and she is in Florida. Today is the day of her father's uh, uh, celebration of death and resurrection, Joe. And so we remember Terry and um, Julie and April in our prayers this morning, their whole family as they grieve the loss of Joe. I wanna pray fervently for our children in our choir camp. If you will please remember them each and every day uh, giving thanks and lifting them up to the light and love of God uh, for all the light that they shine in our lives um, will be a blessing. We're praying for all who are suffering from COVID, of course, uh, the continued prayers that are needed um, in certain areas that have become real hot spots, um, that we have certain states that are being impacted more fully than others. Uh, and this, of course, impacts us all. And so we continue to, to keep that in our prayers. Praying for those that are 
being impacted by this pandemic with loneliness. Um, those who are suffering from depression, those who are trying to hang on, uh, several who are impacted by uh, the lack of financial resources and the inability to work right now. And we remember those folks in our prayers. Uh, we had a prayer request from um, the Roland and Brenda, who lost another dear friend. They've had a couple of deaths in their family in the last week. George and Nancy Field uh, invited prayers for a dear friend, Vera, who suffered a stroke this last week and is dealing with recovery from that. Several folks that continue to deal with uh, cancer especially keeping in our prayers Gary and Rue and Becky and all those extended family members. Um, praying for uh, all those who are essential workers continued in this time. I think that's most of the new concerns that we have. If you've got other concerns that you want to drop down, um, I hope that you will drop them in the comments. Also, we invite you to follow along if you will not only send in your prayer requests, but you can join our uh, prayer chain as well uh, on our website. And so we hope that you'll do that if you haven't already. Uh, it is good to be in prayer for those who are in need. And prayer is a good way for us to spend our time in these days. It is a, a way in which we connect with the God through the Holy Spirit. And sometimes those things that arise in our hearts in prayer are the very things that are needed uh, in our world. Those are my thoughts for you today. Thank you. Uh, we have a, a minister who passed away. Um, recently, and so we pray for that <clears throat> congregation. Thank you, Debbie. Pray for all those who are grieving during this time and the inability to, to gather together um, to celebrate in groups larger than 10. Yeah, it's a difficult time. Well, let us join our hearts in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Lord, we join our hearts this day, this week, this July, in wholehearted love for you, loving you with all of our heart and our mind and our strength that we might move through each and every day, allowing your spirit to emerge in our lives, offering others peace, joy, kindness, gentleness, even self-control, that as we allow your spirit to move in and through us, that your presence becomes a witness in our world and your wholehearted love for each of us is conveyed directly. We lift up and pray this day for our children, especially for this choir camp that is moving uh, in ways that they might grow in faithfulness and wholehearted love for you. And so bless their time of singing and rejoicing. And may it be a time that even virtually they might play well with one another and engage with joy and with hope. We thank you for the leadership of Reverend Milton and for Miss Lynn, for all that they offer to our children as they learn and grow and singing. Also for Rick, 
and for Ada and the youth who continue to contribute uh, to the learning of our children in music. Thank you this day for uh, the blessing of keeping our children safe and we pray for those families who are mourning the loss of children to gun violence this last weekend. And we ask your blessing upon them and ask that you might keep them uh, especially in your care that you might uh, comfort them, surround them with graces that continue to offer them hope and assurance of the promise of eternal life in Christ. We invite your discernment upon all those in leadership who might make decisions for the good of each community as they are needed so that this gun violence might be eradicated, especially here in the United States where we are privileged to live in freedom and with justice. We lift up and ask for your prayers on those um, requested today for Vera who is recovering from stroke, for those dealing with cancer. We pray for Gary and his family, Becky and her family, and Rue and her family. We thank you for the medical teams as they attend to the details of their needs. We remember all those that are recovering from surgery and give thanks for your healing power. For those that are preparing for surgery, we ask your blessing. Uh, we lift up and remember this day Debbie, who is dealing with some uh, difficulties with her cardiac status. And so we pray for her and ask that you uh, be mindful of her needs. May the doctors and nurses protect her and, and keep her healthy as she awaits treatment. We thank you this day for um, all that you are offering to our lives. Uh, for those that, as we are able to, to stay at home and wear masks and continue to prevent the spread of COVID, uh, keep us uh, strong, keep us mindful of the needs of others when we are out and about. We pray this week as our um, youth begin doing uh, very small projects um, safely going out and about with masks uh, to take care of uh, things at Grace Church, the garden, um, to take care of the grounds, and to offer service uh, that the church might, when it resumes, be ready and available uh, for us all. When actually, Lord, we thank you so much that you have kept our church open and that we continue to, to work as disciples, uh, spreading your good word through our Georgetown South neighborhood, um, through those who are in need, uh, through this time of prayer and worship. And we just invite you to, to continue to move in and through us that we might ever learn more about discipleship and find ways to keep offering your transforming love to our world. So we pray this day as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Clayton. Yes, our, our opportunity this day is to go forth and show love in every way that we can. Um, 
uh, I'm going to share a little theory that I have about the world's brokenness that might be encouraging to you. Um, this is not anything that has any kind of uh, scholarly backup, but I've often thought about how God ordered the world out of chaos and that each of us are are created in in the image of our creator so each of us has an ability to be creative that's creative in the ways that we express our wholeheartedness and so if there weren't any chaos in the world if there weren't maybe just a little thread that got left at the original ordering of creation then we'd all just be puppets and we just wouldn't have the choice to find ways to contribute to the ordering, to the loving, to the living wholeheartedly in our world. That indeed our creative beings are to join alongside God's creativity in offering that love for others. So this brokenness is not anything for us to be scared of. It is something for us uh, to look for, to find ways that we are called to keep loving and, and to keep reflecting the light of Christ uh, into some of those broken places. So we are all able uh, to do that. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, keep wearing your mask. That is just the one thing um, that we can be doing that is very simple and it, it shines a wholeheartedness. Uh, I was able to have a distance visit with two of my sons uh, and a, a daughter-in-law through this last weekend and I'm telling you, uh, they came armed. We wore masks the entire time and they came armed with all kinds of wipes and sanitizer and sanitized every doorknob and handle every time they touched a thing. And uh, so it was quite a gift. I feel well loved by uh, my young people in, in our world. Um, again, please go to the music. There's a couple of nice songs. Um, uh, a, a little song, a reflective song, You Are My Hiding Place, for us to remember that those times when we are weary and worried that we can rest in God, and also uh, 10,000 reasons uh, for why we might be thankful and give our wholehearted love to God this day. So go in love and share it with others. Amen.